Imagine waking up one day and realizing that your thoughts, actions, and desires are no longer entirely your own, that something unseen, yet overwhelmingly powerful, is pulling the strings of your decisions, shaping the way you live. Addiction is one of the most complex and misunderstood aspects of human psychology, a force capable of reshaping identities, destroying relationships, and trapping even the strongest minds in cycles of self-destruction. But what if I told you that addiction is not just about substances, that beneath every compulsion, every craving, there is a deeper story, a story of the mind trying to cope, escape, and survive. Today, we are going to unravel the intricate psychology of addiction, exposing its hidden mechanisms and revealing the most powerful truth of all, one that could redefine not just addiction itself, but the way we understand human behavior as a whole. By the end of this journey, you will have a deeper comprehension of addiction and insights that could change the way you see yourself and those around you. So, what exactly is addiction? Is it a disease, a choice, or something in between? The truth is, addiction is not simply a lack of willpower or a moral failing, as many people believe. Neuroscience has shown us that addiction fundamentally alters the brain's structure and function, rewiring circuits responsible for pleasure, motivation, and self-control. This rewiring is what makes addiction so powerful and so difficult to break free from. At its core, addiction is rooted in the brain's reward system. The neurotransmitter dopamine, often called the pleasure chemical, plays a central role in this process. Whenever we experience something pleasurable, whether it is eating our favorite food, achieving a goal or receiving praise, our brain releases dopamine, reinforcing that behavior and encouraging us to repeat it. This mechanism is essential for survival, ensuring that we seek out food, social connection and other positive experiences. However, addictive substances and behaviors hijack this system. Drugs, for example, flood the brain with dopamine in unnatural amounts, creating an intense rush of euphoria. Over time, the brain adapts to this overstimulation by reducing its natural dopamine production and lowering the number of receptors available to process it. This means that activities that once brought pleasure, such as spending time with loved ones or engaging in hobbies, become dull and unfulfilling. The brain now craves the artificial high, leading to compulsive use despite negative consequences. But addiction is not just about chemistry. It is deeply tied to psychology and emotions. Many people turn to addictive behaviors as a way to cope with pain, trauma, or emotional distress. Studies have shown that adverse childhood experiences, such as neglect, abuse, or instability, significantly increase the risk of addiction later in life. The reason is simple. When someone experiences chronic stress or emotional pain, their brain seeks relief. If they discover that a substance or behavior temporarily numbs the pain, the cycle of addiction begins. Think about this for a moment. How many times have you reached for your phone? Not because you needed to check something important, but simply to distract yourself from discomfort. This small act mirrors the way addiction works on a grander scale. Addiction is often an escape, a way to avoid reality, to silence anxiety, or to fill a void. The mind's ability to justify addiction is also fascinating. People trapped in addiction often convince themselves that they are in control, that they can stop whenever they want. This is due to a psychological phenomenon called cognitive dissonance, the discomfort we feel when our actions contradict our beliefs. Instead of facing the painful truth, the mind creates justifications. I deserve this after a long day. Everyone does it. I can quit whenever I want. These rationalizations keep the cycle of addiction alive, making it even harder to break free. But addiction is not just about the substance or the behavior itself. It is about the entire environment surrounding it. The places, people, and routines connected to addiction reinforce the cycle. A smoker does not just crave nicotine. They crave the act of lighting a cigarette during a break or after a meal. A gambler does not just seek financial gain. They are addicted to the thrill of taking risks, the anticipation, the rush of uncertainty. These triggers make addiction deeply ingrained, turning it into more than just a habit. It becomes a lifestyle. And here is where addiction becomes even more powerful. It hijacks the brain's ability to learn and adapt. Addiction rewires the brain's reward and survival mechanisms, making the pursuit of pleasure feel like a necessity rather than a choice. Over time, 
the brain begins prioritizing the addictive substance or behavior above everything else, above relationships, responsibilities, even survival itself. This is why addiction can be so destructive, pushing people to act against their own best interests, even when they are fully aware of the consequences. But what if I told you there is a way to break free, that despite how powerful addiction is, there is a hidden key to overcoming it? In the next section, we will explore the psychological triggers that fuel addiction, the unseen forces that shape our habits, and a groundbreaking discovery that could change the way we understand and overcome addiction forever. If addiction is so deeply embedded in the brain, is it truly possible to break free? The answer lies not just in willpower, but in understanding the psychological forces that drive addiction in the first place. To escape its grip, we must uncover the hidden triggers, the subconscious patterns, and the emotional needs that fuel compulsive behaviors. One of the most overlooked aspects of addiction is the role of environmental cues. The brain learns through association, meaning that specific places, people, and emotions become linked to addictive behaviors. Imagine someone who always drinks alcohol when they feel stressed. Over time, the brain forms an automatic connection between stress and drinking, making it nearly impossible to experience one without craving the other. This is why many people struggle to quit, even after long periods of abstinence, because their environment is filled with reminders that trigger the addictive cycle. A famous study known as the Vietnam War Heroin Experiment illustrates this perfectly. During the war, a shocking number of American soldiers became addicted to heroin. Military reports estimated that nearly 20% of soldiers had developed a serious addiction. However, when these soldiers returned home, something remarkable happened. Most of them quit almost instantly. How was this possible? The answer lies in their environment. In Vietnam, heroin use was tied to stress, danger, and war. But once they were back home, away from those triggers, the addiction lost its grip. This experiment revealed a critical truth. Addiction is not just about the substance itself, but about the entire context in which it exists. But if changing the environment alone was enough, then why do so many people relapse even after rehab, moving to a new city, or cutting ties with toxic influences? The reason is that addiction is not only physical or environmental, it is also deeply emotional. Many addictions begin as a form of self-medication. People turn to drugs, alcohol, gambling, or even compulsive social media use to escape uncomfortable emotions such as loneliness, anxiety, or shame. The brain learns that engaging in these behaviors provides temporary relief, even if the long-term consequences are destructive. This is why addiction is often called a hijacked coping mechanism. It is not just about pleasure, it is about avoiding pain. Consider the famous Rat Park experiment conducted by psychologist Bruce Alexander. Earlier studies had shown that when rats were placed in a cage with access to both water and a drug-laced solution, they almost always chose the drug, eventually overdosing. This seemed to confirm the idea that drugs were inherently addictive, but Alexander questioned this assumption. What if addiction was not just about the drug, but about the environment and emotional state of the individual? To test this, he built Rat Park, a spacious, stimulating environment where rats had plenty of food, toys, and social interaction. Astonishingly, when these rats were given access to the same drug-laced water, they largely ignored it. They did not become addicted because they had other sources of happiness and fulfillment. This study revealed a profound truth. Addiction thrives in isolation and despair, but weakens in environments filled with purpose, connection, and meaning. So, what does this mean for human addiction? It means that breaking free is not just about resisting cravings. It is about replacing the addiction with something deeper and more fulfilling. Many people fail to overcome addiction because they focus only on stopping the behavior without addressing the underlying emotional void. But true recovery is not about deprivation, it is about transformation. This is why some of the most effective addiction treatments focus on rebuilding life, not just avoiding triggers. Research shows that people who engage in meaningful work, strong social bonds and personal growth have a much higher success rate in overcoming addiction. The key is to shift from a mindset of I must stop to what am I moving towards? Instead of just fighting cravings, people who recover successfully find new passions, build healthy relationships, and reconnect with a sense of purpose. But even with the best intentions, many people still struggle with self-sabotage. 
Why do some individuals break free while others remain trapped in the cycle? The answer lies in the brain's ability to reshape itself, a concept known as neuroplasticity. The brain is not a fixed machine, it is a constantly evolving system. This means that addiction is not a life sentence, the brain can be rewired. Scientific studies have shown that meditation, exercise, therapy, and even simple habit changes can create new neural pathways, weakening the power of addiction over time. When someone repeatedly chooses a healthier coping mechanism over an addictive one, their brain starts reinforcing that new behavior. Just as addiction is built through repetition, so is recovery. But there is one more piece of the puzzle, one that few people talk about, yet it holds the power to change everything. In the next section, we will explore the final and most profound element of addiction recovery, the role of identity. Why do some people permanently escape addiction while others relapse again and again? The answer is hidden in the way we see ourselves, and uncovering it could be the key to breaking free once and for all. One of the most overlooked yet powerful forces behind addiction is identity. The way we see ourselves, our self-perception, can either keep us trapped in addiction or set us free. Many people attempt to quit addictive behaviors by using willpower alone, but they fail because they have not changed their core identity. Think about it this way. If someone sees themselves as a smoker trying to quit, their identity is still tied to smoking. Even if they resist for days or weeks, they are still identifying as a smoker who is just temporarily avoiding cigarettes. But if they shift their identity to I am a non-smoker, the struggle becomes different. They are no longer fighting against themselves. They are simply aligning with a new version of who they are. Psychologists have studied this phenomenon extensively. A well-known concept in behavioral science is identity-based habits. The idea is simple. People are far more likely to stick to behaviors that align with their self-image. If someone identifies as a healthy person, they are more likely to make choices that reinforce that belief. If someone sees themselves as an addict, even subconsciously, they will continue behaviors that support that identity. This is why many people who relapse often say things like, I always mess up, or I knew I could not do it. These statements are not just expressions of frustration. They are reflections of a deep-seated identity. To truly break free, a person must rewrite their internal narrative. They must see themselves not as someone struggling against addiction, but as someone who has already moved beyond it. But how does one change identity? The process is not instant, but it begins with small, intentional steps. Every time someone makes a choice that aligns with their desired identity, they reinforce it. When a former addict chooses to go for a walk instead of using a substance, they are casting a vote for their new self. When they engage in a meaningful conversation instead of escaping through a destructive habit, they are strengthening their new identity. Over time, these small decisions reshape how the brain sees itself. However, there is one challenge, memories. The past can be a heavy weight, and many people struggle with shame and guilt over their addictions. These emotions can be so overwhelming that they keep people stuck in a cycle of self-destruction. They think, I have already failed so many times, why would this time be different? But here is the truth, the past does not define the future. Neuroscience has proven that the brain is constantly changing, Old habits and patterns can be unlearned, and new ones can be built in their place. What matters is not where someone has been, but where they are going. The key to overcoming addiction is to stop identifying with past mistakes and start building a new vision of the future. A remarkable example of this comes from studies on post-traumatic growth. While trauma can often lead to addiction, researchers have found that some individuals emerge from their struggles stronger than ever. Instead of being defined by their past pain, they use it as fuel for personal transformation. They see themselves not as victims, but as survivors. They shift from, I am broken, to I am resilient. This shift in perspective is not just psychological, it is neurological. Brain scans have shown that when people reframe their past experiences in a positive way, new neural connections form, reinforcing a sense of empowerment instead of helplessness. This is why therapy techniques like cognitive restructuring and mindfulness are so effective. They help individuals see their past not as a sentence, but as a lesson. Yet, there is one final layer to all of this, something so fundamental that without it, true change is nearly impossible. In the next section, 
we will reveal the most powerful force in breaking free from addiction, the element that ties everything together and determines whether someone remains trapped or steps into a new life. This final piece is what makes the difference between temporary change and permanent transformation. There is one last element that makes the difference between temporary change and lasting transformation, connection. At its core, addiction is not just about substances, behaviors, or even brain chemistry. It is about disconnection, disconnection from self, from others, and from a deeper sense of purpose. This is why so many people trapped in addiction describe feeling isolated even when they are surrounded by others. Their addiction is not just a physical craving, it is an escape from an inner emptiness. Johann Hari, in his groundbreaking research on addiction, famously stated, The opposite of addiction is not sobriety. The opposite of addiction is connection. This statement reflects a profound truth backed by science and human experience. People who feel connected to their communities, their passions, and their sense of meaning are far less likely to fall into destructive addictions. Think about how addiction often thrives in loneliness. When people feel unseen, unheard, or unimportant, they seek relief in substances, gambling, social media, or any other behavior that offers temporary comfort. But this comfort is an illusion. It soothes the symptoms while deepening the cause. This is why breaking addiction requires more than just quitting. It requires rebuilding the connections that were lost. The power of connection is evident in one of the most successful addiction recovery models in the world, Alcoholics Anonymous. While AA is often associated with the 12 steps, its real strength lies in something even deeper, community. When people struggling with addiction join a support group, they are not just given strategies to quit, they are given relationships. They find others who understand their pain, who support them without judgment and who remind them that they are not alone. Scientific studies confirm this. Research shows that individuals in recovery who actively engage in a strong support network have significantly lower relapse rates than those who try to quit alone. This is not just psychological, it is biological. When people experience genuine connection, their brains release oxytocin, the bonding hormone. This hormone reduces stress, increases trust, and creates a sense of belonging, counteracting the emotional void that fuels addiction. But connection goes beyond just relationships with other people. It also includes a connection to purpose. Many people who struggle with addiction describe feeling like they have lost themselves. They are not just seeking pleasure, they are searching for meaning. This is why some of the most powerful recovery stories come from individuals who discovered a new mission in life, whether through creative expression, helping others, or pursuing personal growth. A powerful example of this can be seen in the lives of former addicts who become addiction counselors. They take their painful past and transform it into a source of strength, using their experiences to help others break free. This shift, from suffering to service, creates a profound sense of fulfillment. Instead of running from their past, they use it as a tool for change. This is a key factor in long-term recovery, not just avoiding addiction, but moving towards something greater. But what if someone does not yet feel that sense of purpose? What if they are still lost in the cycle, unable to see a way out? The answer is simple, start small. Studies in positive psychology show that even small acts of purpose, volunteering, creating something meaningful, or simply helping a friend, begin to rewire the brain. They create a shift from a self-destructive mindset to a mindset of contribution. And as this shift happens, the addiction loses its power. This brings us to the final truth. Recovery is not about becoming a perfect person. It is not about never struggling again. It is about learning to navigate life with new tools, new connections, and a new identity. It is about realizing that addiction does not define a person. What defines them is their choice to rise beyond it. So if you or someone you love is struggling with addiction, remember this. The path to freedom is not found in willpower alone. It is found in understanding the brain's patterns, reshaping identity, and most importantly, reconnecting with yourself, with others, and with a deeper sense of meaning. Because addiction may be powerful, but human resilience is stronger. Thanks for looking.